And hi again, everyone. We welcome you to the WKYC High School Football Game of the Week preview show. It is the final week of the regular season of 2021. I'm Dave DiNatale, along with Tyler Carey. It means it's also the last week that you've had, you have had to vote on our Game of the Week. From here on in, uh, we get to pick our playoff games, but Tyler Carey... Uh, we, we, we gave fans, I, I really was, was pleased with the options we had for fans to vote on for week 10. A conference championship game, a game with a ton of playoff computer points on the line, and a good old-fashioned rivalry, a, a backyard rivalry. So we had, <laughs> so again, just to spell it out for everybody, that rivalry, Strongsville-Brunswick. That game with computer points on the line, big time, Benedictine at Nordonia. And we also gave you the option of the Great Lakes Conference Championship game. First time they're ever doing this. Rocky River at Buckeye. It was close, and it was close all week. But we do have a winner, my friend. Yes, we do. One of our closest votes of the year, Dino. It really everyone had a chance going into the final hours of voting. But in the end, it is the matchup between Benedictine and Nordonia that will be our final WKYC.com high school football game of the week of the regular season. Hard to believe we're already in week 10. Kind of makes me sad, but also excited for what's to come in the playoffs. Um, as we said, they were kind of jockeying back and forth with Buckeye and Rocky River for much of the polling. And then Strongsville and Brunswick made a run uh, kind of toward the end. But our season is going to end, the regular season at least, the way it began with a Bengal road game. And as you said, Dino, this is, this game has huge implications for both teams as the postseason gets underway. Yeah. We, you know, we were keeping a really close eye last week as we were doing uh, the game out in independence, we were listening and to, you know, getting your reports as the Bengals had that big test that we had all kind of circled all year long against Hoban. Well, yeah, the Knights are the Knights and, 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 you know, hoping kind of, I think reclaimed that region five for themselves in terms of the, the best team, despite their losses. But the good news for the Bengals is, uh, are, is that they still have an opportunity here at TC as does Nordonia to maybe wind up as that top seed, that number one team in region five headed to the playoffs. No doubt, Dino. Let's start with Benedictine. Now, yeah, we had been keeping a very close eye on that game with Hoban. So much for Hoban kind of seating that mantle of uh, the best team in Region 5. They won that game 28-10 to 10 over the Bengals. Closer than the final score might indicate. It was only 14-10 to 10 at the half, but C.J. Yarborough and the Bengals kind of struggled to move the ball all night, especially with the win kind of uh, playing tricks on them. Daryl Bettingfield, the great Toledo commit, still had 12 tackles. But you mentioned it. Benedictine, 6-1, and one, that's their first loss. If they win this game against Nordonia, they will still be the number one seed in Region 5. Regardless of what happens with Hoban, they get St. Edward this week. And even if they lose, Benedictine could still, theoretically, it's going to depend on kind of what happens around them but they could still theoretically be the, the number one seed. I think it kind of shows you just how wide open region five is and really D two in general this season. Meanwhile, for the Knights, I, I, you know, watching Nordonia all year long and we've, and you know, this is our second or third time we tried to get a Nordonia game on the schedule. And finally, you know, I, I, I was talking to athletic director, Rob Eckenrode this week. He's like, God, I, you know, I really hope we can get you guys out for a game. Well, here we come. They, they've had just a, a consistent season, but I think they're looking for that, that signature win, if you will, that win that will kind of get them into the playoffs feeling like, hey, look, we've got a shot at this thing. We're not just a good team. We can be a, a great team because I think they have that, that capability. I mean, we, we, we saw that last year. This would be that kind of win for them if they can take down the Bengals at home. No, I totally agree with that. And this is a very good Nordonia team, 7-2 and two record. There are only two losses to North Royalton, who's had a very good bounce back year. And then Stowe, who we all know who good, we all know how good Stowe is. And that was a two-possession game, but that was closer than the final score indicated. 
Uh, Nordonia coming off 45, 20 win over Brexville that they were only up by a touchdown going into halftime, but they kind of righted the ship, pulled away in the second half. This is a Knights team that really knows how to score points. And as we've seen with Benedict, with Benedictine, despite having betting field there, they're not always the best when it comes to containing high powered offenses. Mark Wilson last week against the bees, 210 yards, two touchdowns. Matt Hayes, six catches, 85 yards, two touchdowns. Clay Aiken had a score um, because there was some sort of double pass. And no, not that Clay Aiken, a different Clay Aiken (laughs) playing playing for Nordonia. You mentioned as far as the implications go, Nordonia, they need some stuff to happen around them. But if they win this game, there is a chance they could be the top seed in Region 5. As I said earlier, Hoban playing St. Edward, that's obviously going to be a very difficult test for the for the other Knights down in Akron. So if things go right, and I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility, it's a very real chance Nordonia could go into the playoffs essentially controlling their own destiny where, all right, the road to the state title game is going to have to run through Summit County. There you go. And, and that's that's the way they want it. And it, it'll be really interesting you know, to, to see how it plays out. I mean, this is a bit, we've talked about this week 10 feels a little more anticlimactic than we can remember because the, the playoffs field is widened. Now there's, it's not, you're not fighting for that eighth spot anymore. So it, it's a little bit more anticlimactic than we can recall. But I do think in this scenario, the race to have the top seed and, and to play you know, to play Hoban at a time that's, I think, a little bit more advantageous to you, to be home early. Um, things like that, I think, are important. So I, I, I think that you're going to find that these two teams, you know, Benedictine and Nordonia, are going to really approach this game strong and not as, well, it's a week before the playoffs, let's not worry about it. Yeah, there's, there's a lot on the line for this game. Now, as we get to Tyler's top five, um, I can imagine – Based on what happened, not necessarily last Friday, but what happened last Saturday, as there were a couple of huge games on Saturday, uh, there's been some movement, I would imagine. Oh, no doubt. And look, you kind of alluded to it based on what happened Saturday. One of those teams may still be in my top five, but we do have a shakeup at number one. And I think you guys are pretty well keen as to what that is. But let's start with the bottom of the rankings with number five. got to shake up there, too. A new number five after Benedictine lost to Hoban this week. Kind of had to rack my brain a little bit. But I decided, you know what, I'm throwing a curveball. I'm going to go to the outskirts of our designated market area all the way to Tuscaroras County. <laughs> Dover Tornadoes, Dino. Dover 8-0. A big, big 42 nothing win over Lindsley, West Virginia last week. Now, for those of you wondering, oh, Dover, who can Look, I, I do want to clarify some things because I know we joke about all my love for the Lucas Cubs and all that. Those teams are in our DMA, which means they get Channel 3 as their NBC station. It's kind of hard to cover them sometimes because of how far away they are from Cleveland. So sometimes they could have teams that are just as good as, if not better than some teams closer to us, but we can't give them the love that they deserve. And that's unfortunate. So I like to give them love when I can, but this Dover team has earned it. Wins Dino over Akron East, Steubenville. We know how good the big red are. Strongsville. Sorry about that. Um, Yeah, that hurt. (laughs) A a very good, uh, QB to wide receiver connection in TC Mulk and Joey Farthing. We also talk about how much we love Region 9 in Division 3. It's our favorite region. They're number two right now. So yeah. if you're talking about who's going to come out of that region and who's going to make a run to Canton, you've got to include Dover in that discussion. No doubt. I mean, we'll talk about Chardon. And, and if Alex Moore gets healthy, we'll talk about Aurora. And, and Kenston has played well since that loss to Chardon. Yes, but I'm with you. Yeah, you you gotta Dover isn't, isn't surprising anybody anymore. And and 
you know, I, I like the fact that you you went into that region and you found a team that's been playing well under the radar this year. So uh, uh, bravo for the Tornadoes and bravo for you for picking them at number five. Oh, I appreciate that. By the way, Dover, uh, got a big game this weekend. New Philadelphia, that is one of the most oh. bitter rivalries in all of Ohio. That is certainly going to be fun to watch. We'll have our eye on it. Uh, number four, maybe pound for pound the best team in the state of Ohio right now, quite possibly in the entire country. And that is the Kirtland Hornets. A whatever 44 nothing win over Ashtabula Edgewood in week nine. Ramon Lascano, how many times, Dino, would you think a quarterback is going to be your punt returner? Well, he is the Not Hornets very often. Punt. He is the Hornets punt returner, and he had a 63-yard punt return touchdown in the victory. Now, the big news for Kirtland this week, not just that they won and not just that, oh, they're going to be the number one seed in their own region, 49th win in a row. That is now the third tied for the third longest streak in the history of the state of Ohio. And now with a team out of Wythe, Alabama losing the longest active winning streak in all of America. Dino, the nation is now nation. paying attention to Kirtland. Any region, any division, any any sector of the country, nobody has won more uh, in a row than Tiger Laverde's Hornets. Uh, Nick Camino is going to be doing a, a profile on them on 3 News, so uh, keep an eye on that. We'll also have it at WKYC.com for you to watch as well when it, when we put it out there. Um, yeah, they're just we, – we've, we've had the chance to see a few of those wins of the, of the 49, and uh, – I, I got to tell you, I mean, having watched them a few weeks ago against Perry, they're poised and primed to do it again. I mean, they're going to be – some somebody in that – probably in that state championship game going to have to really be on. You, I, I just go back to what Perry's coach told us before that game when we were out there. You cannot make – you have to play letter perfect against Kirtland, yep. and then you're still going to you're still going to have to hope to get a break to beat them. And Perry didn't even play bad. It was only 17-6 to six going into the fourth quarter. Yeah. And Kirtland pulled away and won by 24, yeah. excuse me, 24 points. They get orange this week. I have a feeling the streak is going to go to 50. Um, and no disrespect to our <laughs> friends in Pepper Pike. But I, I think you're right. I think um, you know Tiger Laverde is not looking ahead. He knows that no. he, they got to take it one week at a time. But I have a feeling we're going to be uh, seeing Kirtland and Canton again. Uh, come December. All right, let's go to number three, another very good team, and they just keep showing it. The Chardon Hilltoppers, Dino, had a big test against Willoughby South last Friday. 59-13 victory over the Rebels in a game that was shortened by rain. Uh, this game got started with a, a block punt for a touchdown, and it all kind of went downhill from there. Alex Henry had three TDs on the ground. Chardon has won, uh, I think, 22 in a row now at this point. And I think we've been saying this ad nauseum. They're number one in Region 9, and I think they have to be the complete favorites to uh, repeat in Division 3 this year. Yeah, I don't think there's any question right now going into it. They're, they're the team to beat. And, you know, Do they're, they're going to have to get through Dover, Aurora, New Philadelphia, they've already beaten New Philadelphia in the regular season. They're going to have to get through a, a, a challenging road to get out of that region nine. But I mean, they're up for it. They know what they need to do. And the, the, the interesting thing for me will be, uh, can Aurora get healthy in time for a potential meeting down the line against Chardon? Yeah, you mentioned Aurora losing to Highland this week. Um, Highland, a very good football team, but Alex Moore out at quarterback for Aurora. I do believe, though, if he can get healthy by the playoffs, maybe even by week two of the playoffs, then I think Aurora could get back into that conversation of, all right, this is a team that can make a run and win the region. A Chardon, number one in the, the Division Three AP poll, by the way, in the state of Ohio. Uh, Kirtland is number one in D5. I forgot to mention that earlier. All right, here's the shakeup I was talking about and you were talking about. Number two, despite losing last week, St. Edward, I still have to put them at number two because of how good I think this team is. Now, they did have a devastating loss uh, to Archbishop Moeller in overtime last week. Um, 
excuse me, uh, Christian Ramos interception in overtime, first play of overtime, uh, that kind of uh, sealed it for the Eagles. Um, only turnover of the game. Uh, Danny Enovich did have a good game, 119 yards and a touchdown. Look, St. Edward, obviously that's a disappointing loss. You want to finish the season undefeated. However, they have a chance to right the ship against Archbishop Hoban this week. Yep. They win that game based on the computer points. They could still be the number one seed in the playoffs. I'm not saying that's fair, but it is what it is. It is what and, it is, yeah. And you know Tom Lombardo and the rest of this team knows that, all right, wanted to go undefeated. Any national championship discussion, that's pretty much out the window, but that's kind of out of your control anyway. Everything you want to accomplish is still right in front of you. And it starts this week against the Knights. Even if they lose this game, I still think they're a contender. But I would not be too discouraged no. if I'm the Eagles program because this is a team that I think could still make a run all the way to uh, Tom Benson Stadium. Yeah, no, I, I think we got a reminder that last weekend <clears throat> that the, the Cincinnati teams – are still really good for all the, you know, talk about St. Edward and Medina, who I'm, you know, I'm guessing you're going to get to them in a second. Uh, <laughs> there, you know, those Cincinnati teams, St. X, Moeller, Elder, et cetera, they're still pretty good. Oh yeah. And, and no doubt. And we also, I think got a clue, I'll, I'll touch on this real quick. Don't sleep on St. Ignatius. No. The Wildcats are only five and four, but they got a huge victory over St. Xavier, a team that coming in, many thought was the best in Ohio when the season began. Uh, Chuck Kyle and his guys, hats off to them for a huge, huge victory. And now when the playoffs begin, you're going to have to be starting to look at St. Ignatius again. And that's something we haven't been able to say in a few years. And I, I got to admit, it's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, peaking at the right time. And, and yeah, you have to, when you think about Division One, Region One, you better not Sleep on St. Ignatius. Better not. A I think that, absolutely that not. Loud and clear. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely not. And the best teams in Region 1 know that for sure. But you gave it away, not that anyone uh, was guessing. Uh, but the, the new number one, 9-0 and for the first time in program history, the Medina Battling Bees. A 70-7 to win over winless Lorraine. Wow. Uh, last Friday night on senior night, Drew Aller tied his own uh, county record with five touchdowns in a single game. Uh, they head to Solon to play a uh, pesky Comets team this uh, Friday night. I got to think Medina is going to be favored there. And again, even if they win, they might not be the number one seed, depending on what happens with Hoban and St. Ed. But th this has been a very special year for uh, Larry Laird's squad. And it's been a treat to watch them, to follow them all season long. And now it starts to get serious because unlike last year, when they went on that run to get to the regional final, no one's going to be, uh, no one's going to be surprised by them this year. No, no, they're not, they're not going to sneak up on anybody now. Now that everybody, everybody has an understanding of how good, uh, number one, how good Drew Aller and, and that core of wide receivers are, but how good and how improved uh, the defense is this year. So they're not going to take anybody by surprise. Um, it's just a question of, is there a defense out there that can figure it out and, and stop, you know, force Drew Aller to make mistakes or stop them? Um, <clears throat> nobody's done it yet. So we'll, we'll see when we get into the playoffs. But th this will be interesting to see how Solon does against them because Solon has been kind of up and down a little bit and mm – -hmm. uh, I'll be curious to see how they play uh, in this big challenge against the uh, battling bees. The, the issue with Medina, and we saw it when they played Stowe, a very good team. You need Drew Aller to make those mistakes. As you mentioned, he doesn't make a lot of them. He did have a bad throw for an interception against the Bulldogs that they took advantage of and got themselves in the game. But that was his only mistake. He righted the ship after that because he knew like, all right, I can't do that again. And he's such a good quarterback that he's not going to do that again. And from there on out, Madonna kind of rolled. So unless he essentially shoots himself in the foot, it's hard to have a chance and to stop this offense. Now, as you get deeper into the playoffs, you're going to be having teams just as talented, if not more talented than Medina. So we'll have to see, but 
I, I think you and I have been talking about this since early in the year. It looks like it's going to be a collision course yeah. between Medina and St. Edward for that regional championship. Maybe not as much now with St. Ed losing a game, but those two, it's Medina, St. Edward, and then there's a little bit of a drop off when you go yeah. to the rest of region one. I, I, I would agree. We're going to have a lot more time here as we uh, head into the playoffs for week 11 next week uh, to look at matchups and, uh, and uh, really have some fun getting ready for the postseason. But for now, we get ready for week 10. Friday night, we will wrap up our regular season with a couple of Division II Region 5 powerhouses, the Benedictine Bengals at the Nordonia Knights. I'll join you for the call at 6.50 at WKYC.com. We'll also be on your WKYC app on Facebook Live and on YouTube. TC, I will talk to you uh, Friday, my friend. As always, I, I appreciate you joining us on, on a uh, on a well-deserved off day. <laughs> and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you on Friday, my friend. Happy to do it, Dino. I'm very excited for this game. And as I mentioned, I am so, so excited for these playoffs to get started. This is going to be a Fun, fun ride, my friend. Absolutely. All right, again, week 10 Friday, Benedictine at Nordonia. You voted us in as that WKYC.com high school football game of the week. For Tyler Carey, I'm Dave DiNatale. Thanks for watching the WKYC high school football game of the week preview show.